Good morning. Good morning. I'm thinking about enrolling in the gym here. Oh, okay, great. Well, I just need to take some details from you then. Okay. Well, first of all, is it a full time or part time membership you're interested in? Well, actually, I'm interested in the family membership. Okay, I see. Sorry, could I just take your name first of all? Of course. It's Sarah Dean. Is that Sarah with a H? That's right. And sorry, your family name is D E A N? D E I N. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. And could I just take a contact number as well, please? Yes, I'll give you my mobile. So that's 0435-889-4386. Okay, 0435-889-4386. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Um, I can never remember my own number correctly. It's 0425-889-4368. Sorry, sorry. Uh, four, three, six, eight. That's okay. So, how many members of your family are going to join the gym? Well, all of us, I hope. So that's myself, my husband, and my two sons. Oh, I see. And will it be the first time you've all joined the gym? For myself and the boys, it will be. Yeah. My husband joined a while ago, but he's not been here for quite a long time. Right. Well,、uh, we do have an induction seminar which everyone has to attend before they can start using the gym. Oh yes, yeah. I seem to remember my husband doing one of those before. Okay. Well, in that case, he may not have to do it again. How long ago was that? Can you remember?、Mm, probably a year and a half. Ah,、uh, well, he will have to do it again then.、Um, if it was less than a year, it wouldn't be necessary. Oh, I see. Uh, so I can book in for the induction now, if you like.、Uh, when would you like to come? Well, the evening time would be best: Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Oh, okay. We've got Wednesday from seven to eight p.m. or Thursday eight thirty to nine thirty. Hmm. Let me see. What's going to be best?、Uh, nothing on Monday then, or slightly earlier on Thursday. Uh, I'm afraid not. Monday from nine to ten is an option, but I thought that might be too late for you.、Mm, that's right. So we'll go for Wednesday, seven to eight. Okay. There are several options you can add to your family plan. Was it just the gym you wanted, or are you interested some of the other facilities too?、Mm, well, maybe. Could you explain the options, please? Sure. The basic family plan package includes use of the gym during the opening hours, of course. But it doesn't include use of the swimming pool or any of the courts,、um, and it does include the sportswear. With the basic plan, you have to bring your own or rent it each time you come. Okay, so the swimming pool is not included in the plan.、Mm, that's right. It's an extra twenty-seven dollars a month per person. That's compared to seven dollars per person if you pay each time you come.、Mm, I see. And you mentioned the courts. That's right. The badminton, tennis, and squash courts. Uh, the badminton and squash courts are both nineteen dollars fifty a month per person, compared to six dollars fifty if you pay as you go. And the tennis courts? The tennis courts are twenty four dollars ninety a month, compared to nine dollars fifty pay as you go. Okay, well, I'll need to discuss all that with my husband. Yeah.、Mm, yes, of course. If you were interested in the sportswear option, by the way, it can save a lot of washing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Well, that option is just eleven dollars ninety per month、um, per person. Not so, not a bad deal, really. Okay, well, I need、Ashton、to chill. We have、over. Liz Freeman, who is the marketing manager at Ashton's all-new lifestyle center. Welcome, Liz. Hello. Now the sports center. Sorry, now you call it lifestyle center. That's right, because that's what it's designed to be—to be a part of people's lifestyle. Okay, and you say in your publicity that you spent over. One hundred forty thousand pounds on doing the center up. Could you tell us where that money has been spent? Yes, of course. Well, as you say, we've spent over one hundred forty thousand pounds, and our aim at the beginning of the project was to convert what was basically a small sports center to a much larger lifestyle center, offering the kind of facilities people are looking for, the kind of facilities people feel they need these days. Okay, so can you tell us 
What's new exactly? Well, the moment you walk in, you'll see how the place has changed. The whole reception area has been enlarged and refurbished. So you have this wonderful open space as you enter with lots of light. We also now have four small reception desks instead of one large one, and each one of these is manned by a member of staff. And the reception staff have all undergone an intensive training program, so they're now qualified to give advice to people directly regarding exercise programs. You don't have to make an appointment to see a fitness instructor anymore before getting started. And the gym? Well, yes, I'm glad you asked me about that. We've improved the facilities enormously. We've installed an air conditioning system, which keeps the whole area much cooler. We've also got twice the number of both bikes and running machines. The weight training area, which many customers felt that it was rather outdated, that's all gone. And we've got a full range of state-of-the-art free weights. Sounds great. Oh, it's a fantastic space now. Also, the changing rooms have been given a new look, and the lockers have been replaced with slightly larger ones. Well, it all makes me feel like going down there for a workout right now. Just coming back to the new swimming pool, you're having a swimming event to help promote the new pool, I understand. That's right. We're having a synchronized swimming display three nights a week, and that will run through till the end of July. People can come along to see the show on Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday evening, but you'll need to book a seat beforehand. So do you have a number to call for our listeners? Absolutely. Please call 0798-334768, and the staff will be happy to take your booking. Okay, so if you didn't quite catch that, it's 0798-334768. And how much are the tickets, Liz? Front row seats are £10 each. The next three rows back are £7.90. And the back rows are just £5.50 each. Well, that seems very reasonable. Yes. Also, there's a free minibus service for anyone who needs to go to the train station after the show. They'll be running every 15 so minutes. That's excellent. Online well, Liz... Games. We mustn't forget the claims made by many respected researchers that there are indeed some online games which have beneficial effects on our health. So what we usually hear is that online games are bad for us, right? But today, we'll see how this is perhaps not the case. Let's make a start. So sorry, you mean online games can be good for us? Depending on which games and how often we use them, yes. But let's look first at probably the main health benefit of playing online games, potential memory improvement, and potential cognitive skills development. My first point is that these benefits can differ depending on the group of people. Here I'm referring to adults and children. So adults gain in different ways than children? That's right. I see. It seems adults tend to use some parts of their brain more often than others. Understandably, adults' reasoning and logic is often already well developed but it's memory that seems to get poor as we get older, and which we seem to neglect. This is even more of an issue these days because we rely on This is even more of an issue these days because we rely on the memory of our computers. So many adults do find the memory games more challenging than those that focus on, as I say, logic. On the other hand, the same memory games may present a lesser challenge to young children than the reasoning and logic games often do. But isn't it true that online games can be detrimental to a child's health? That's a good point, and I'm glad you mentioned it. The thing is, it's a case of everything in moderation. There is strong scientific evidence now which seems to confirm the beneficial effects of, so to say, high-quality games. Having said that, nobody is advocating putting a child in front of a computer for eight hours a day nor even four hours for that matter. Online time needs to be balanced with time spent doing physical exercise. This physical exercise is as important, if not so, than any online game is likely to ever be.
Okay, so turning to some other aspects of online games, the latest research now seems to suggest that games involving other people can also be beneficial to our health. How so? Well, social interaction online may function in a similar way to social interaction offline. Games where you need to work with another person to solve a problem can be both enjoyable and serve as a form of training. Collaboration and negotiation skills come into play, so to speak, and can be developed. Also, chatting or discussing something online, meeting new people and having something to talk about, in this case the game, can be very enjoyable. They can relieve stress or have overall a very positive impact on someone's health. So are there any games specifically designed to help people with stress or personal problems or do they not go that far yet? Well that's an interesting question. As far as I know there is nothing out there as of yet which tackles the problem of stress directly. However there are games which help people recover from certain illnesses that can help other people cope with illnesses or conditions that their family or friends may be suffering from. Sorry, how do you mean exactly? Take for example dementia. So many people sadly still suffer from it. But many of these games can stave off dementia and help people to reduce forgetfulness well into old age. Take another example, cancer. Of course it affects the patient, but it also affects those people close to the patient. Some online games aimed at both adults and children help these people to first understand the illness in a way which is not too heavy, in a way which most people and children can cope with. And some games go further in helping us learn what to do, helping us to develop useful strategies to cope with these very difficult situations. These games are perhaps quite different in some ways to what most people imagine when they think of online games. And although, of course, the content is different, very often the activities people are required to do are very similar. So there are games of this kind specifically for children and others specifically for adults? There are. There are also games which are designed to be played by parents with their children. These are very interesting and actually very clever. They require cooperation and understanding. And the good ones really can build the parent-child relationship and really help bonding. I see. And so, while well, some people who become centenarians, people who live for a hundred years or more, do so by delaying illness or disability, others, it seems, are able to withstand damage that would significantly harm perhaps less robust individuals. The second group, it seems, are simply able to soldier on. So, we find both these profiles in centenarians today. What then, according to leading researchers, are the secrets of longevity? Well, most of the researchers point us to four key factors. I'm sure they won't come as any surprise to you. They are diet, exercise, social, and by that we mean the amount and quality of social interaction, and fourthly, psycho-spiritual, and just to be clear about that, we mean the level of psychological and spiritual awareness someone has and manages to maintain. So, clearly then, anyone aiming for 100 should not underestimate the influence of lifestyle. Researchers, however, are now pointing to a fifth factor. It seems that if we look at a close relative of a centenarian, we could bet money on them living a long life. A recent study suggests that brothers of centenarians are 17 times more likely to reach 100 than their peers. And sisters are 8 times more likely to reach 100 than their peers. So, we're talking about the brothers and sisters of centenarians. Now the study also indicates that the children of centenarians are one-third as likely to die of cancer as the general population, and less than one-sixth as likely to die of heart disease. So here we are talking about the children of centenarians, who, it seems, are far less likely to die of these common diseases than other people are. There is also further evidence of a genetic link, evidence which comes from what have become known as longevity hotspots. Okinawa in Japan is the front-runner of these hotspots. 
at those 58 centenarians per 100,000 people, and the number is on the rise. Now, like other hotspots, including for example Sardinia and Iceland, Okinawa is a relatively isolated island community, and in these kinds of communities, we often find high levels of inbreeding and a clustering of genetic variants. And, as we know, such genetic similarities often have detrimental effects on a person's health. But in these hotspots, the effect seems to be the opposite. It seems to have a positive effect, and it seems to have united the genetic variants in a way that increases a person's lifespan. Of course, some people have argued that what many of the so-called hotspots have in common is an environment which is conducive with a healthy lifestyle. Mild weather, low levels of stress, etc. And that the people who can afford to retire to those places are often the wealthiest people in society. The latest research, however, suggests that these types of environmental factors do not have a long-lasting impact on longevity. In fact, their effect seems to fade over time, whereas the effect of genes only starts to exert a, lot, a strong influence on our lifespan after the age of 60. Now, you'll find a reference for the next item in the handout. This research was carried out in Scandinavia and involved over 10,000 pairs of twins. And basically, what the researchers found was that, prior to reaching 60, both identical and non-identical twins have independent odds on reaching a certain age. But beyond 60, the odds on one twin reaching a given age are greatly increased if their co-twin also does. Let's take a short break here. So, it seems that this link between longevity and certain genes could take us into very interesting areas. The scientific community are already talking about a longevity gene, and even a centenarian gene. The search is on for genes that contribute to a longer life. And many candidate genes have been put forward, but the problem has always been that very few indeed have produced consistent results during testing, and no verification of their role has therefore been possible, until quite recently. At the University of Hawaii last year, researchers had a bit of a breakthrough. They found that people who carried two copies of a particular form of a gene were almost three times more likely to make it to 100 than those without. So, they found a huge difference here. The people with two copies of the variant were three times more likely to make it to 100. That's quite a find. So, what is this variant that they uncovered? I'm sure you'd all like to know. Well, it's known as FOXO 3A. And of course, it's causing a good deal of excitement not only because of the possible link with longevity, but also, quite interestingly, due to its possible link to basic good health. It seems that people carrying this variant were found to have lower levels of strokes, heart disease, and cancer than those of us without the variant. So, very, very interesting indeed. The search continues. So far, it has been far from easy to find genes which can be linked to longevity, but now the future seems slightly brighter. Not only because of the promise FOXO 3A holds, but also because of advances in genomic technology, and in addition because of a gradual increase in the number of centenarians alive who can be studied. Although the days when people will expect to live to 100 and beyond and nowhere in sight, this research could provide medical advances which could help all of us to remain healthy and independent for far longer than we normally do now.